But I had already studied it for like 10 years before I ever did anything. I was afraid to start because I didn't want to quote unquote fail. I felt like I, I needed to know everything. I wanted to jump out looking like a guru. Do one thing better than you did the last time. Right. That's all you do. Keep adding, building bricks, brick by brick. Yeah. Just do one thing better. And then before you know it, you're like, man, I look good. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Be For Real podcast. And today, I have someone special here today with me, and that is Taya, a.k.a. Miss AIG. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, I am Lataya Spikes, owner and president of American Investment Group, and I am that real estate chick. That real estate chick. That's real. That's kind of businessy gangster. <laughs> I like that. I like I like the sound of that. But um, well, we're gonna jump right in. But uh, first, uh, since you just found out not too long ago I have a podcast. What I like to do here is I like to give people their flowers, especially people who are doing things in the community or doing things business-wise, success, um, aiming towards success. And also what I like to do is I like to shed light on these people in order to help those who might want to follow in those footsteps. Okay. So basically today what we're going to do here is uh, just discuss a little bit of your upbringing, a little bit of uh, what you do, how you started to do it, and also just give some gems and jewels for people who want to follow in your footsteps, rather that be actually doing real estate investment or just following their dreams as far as success, whether that's art, dance, whatever that is. So basically what this is, is just, this is just a platform to where we like to showcase those things to motivate and show things that uh, people can do in their life to uh, aim more towards their success. Okay. Yeah. So um, we're going to jump right in. Uh, just give me a little background. But first, what do you do and what is it called? <laughs> okay. Um, so I am a real estate investor. Um, and that is a broad term because there's so many niches um, when you invest. So, but I do a little bit of a, a couple of them. Um, I flipped, um, I have rental properties. Um, when I got in this business, I was a wholesaler. So I've wholesaled and still will wholesale. Um, I partner with other investors. Um, and coming up in the future, I'm going to be doing a little teaching um, in real estate. Now that I've, you know, done quite a bit of deals and been involved with a couple of deals, I get a lot of times now, you know, once you've proven yourself and you've, you've done, you started to do things, um, people um, start to ask you about getting into the business. So now I want to begin to teach. But I got into this, I remember in 10th grade, Miss Powers, um, I was, I went to Jasper High School. And there was this course it was we called it home economics I don't think they have it in school now but in 10th grade going into my 11th grade I used to work half a day and then I would go to school and I remember one day she asked everyone to stand up and say what they wanted to do when they finally graduated and I remember saying I want to be in real estate and she said um I mean like what do you want to go to college for and I was like real estate she was like well you don't have to go to college for real estate so I was like okay I, I'll, I'll go to school for accounting and um so I went to Lamar for accounting and got um accounting and business management because I knew that one day I was going to be an entrepreneur and that I didn't want anyone to like in regards to business I didn't want to not know what was going on um, the, the, the processing in and the functioning of business. So after that, after working and doing that for over 15 years, work since I was 15 years old. Okay. I don't mean to cut you off, but I want, I want to back up a little bit. So as, so you said as a child, you always wanted to be into real estate or did you just know that you wanted to be successful in anything? It was, it was just real estate. It was at that just point? real estate. So think back to when you were a child, 13, 15, 16, um, what did real estate mean to you? Because I know it didn't mean what it mean right now. What it means right now. So, like, what what did you think real estate was back then? I did owning a house and just uh, renting it out. Honest, I didn't know. I just <laughs> knew that I wanted to be in real estate. Something okay. in me just I, I wanted to be in real estate. I, I would probably say back then, trying to remember, just the the only people that we knew were realtors. So okay. I probably, and that's why she told me also to, you know, you don't have to go to college for that. It was just probably to be a realtor. So yeah. basically, um, so go back to how you got your start. Uh, you said you went to school as uh, to be an accountant. Or, or accounting. Or accounting. business management, right. Okay, so uh, what did that lead to after you uh, went to school to for accounting? Did, that, did you get a job in that field or? 
I did. I worked in offices most of my career, um, you know, helping to to run offices, invoicing, and and basically seeing how businesses were ran. And after that, um, I just felt like I'm running someone else's business. I have a desire to own my own business, and I have this passion for real estate. So that's how the two collided. All the time while I was working at these offices, I never was not working in real estate. I would read oracles, I would get online, and I follow people that were already doing what I wanted to do. So this is nothing that you just jumped into. You have been studying and preparing for this like pretty much your whole life since you were old enough to know what real estate was. Yes, more than 15 years. That's why when people ask me, how do you get into real estate? It's not a simple question because I've been studying this for so long. I just was afraid to leave the security of my job. Okay, so uh, just just for a couple, uh, well, a few of the uh, viewers that may watch this, um, I know it's going to be some type of uh, misunderstanding. So, can you give me the difference between a real estate agent and an investor, like like as best as you can? Real estate agent um, shows that they they sell houses. And they help other people. They they sell houses for other people. They help other people buy houses. Okay. That's that's putting it simply. Now they do a lot more, and we won't get into the logistics of that. Yeah, but, but that's, that's just the basic. That's the basic. They buy and sell houses. Um, I buy and sell houses. An investor, let's say, an investor in regards to a, a, an agent. We also buy and sell houses. We flip houses. We um, wholesale houses. Um, we stop foreclosures. We can do uh, assist in all types of things. Our our what we do is is much broader. Um, and I hate to just say like we we work in all aspects of real estate, mm-hmm. but you'd have to know what the aspects of real estate are. But that's the main difference. We we do a lot of like construction and flipping and and um, property management i even know investors that have property management companies um and 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 rentals owner financing so just a a much broader so when you're in uh investing or well, doing your job which is um real estate investing are you reaching out to find like um what would you call them other investors like as far as capital how 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 is that are you like finding property, purchasing the property, flipping it? Like what, how does a typical deal go? A typical deal. So are, you, you, are you finding contractors, finding people with the, with the capital to, to help invest? Like how does that work? There's nothing typical in real estate investing. Oh, okay. So it's whatever you have to do to get the deal done or get the job done. It is whatever you have to do. And there's more than one way to get a deal done. Okay. So it all depends on the deal, what you're, what you want to accomplish out of the deal, the exit strategy, how you get started in the deal. There's so many things that factor into any one deal and no deal is the same. Okay. So as far as your, just give, give me a rundown of, of the, like the latest one or the one that you want to talk about. Like, so how, you know, how's that working out or how did that process go? The latest one, the latest deal that I did was a, um, was a wholesale deal and okay since you did mention that i was just gonna say explain the wholesale okay. how, how, what is that and how does that work okay i'll explain wholesale and i also get um okay wholesaling is when you find a house and um so let's say for instance you have a house for sale then i come to you uh, or you don't even have to ha- have a house for sale you own a house let me let me be that broad because i don't want I, I don't want anyone to get caught on that they they have to find someone that's selling a house yeah you find someone that you get a house under contract with to purchase that house initially um but you you're transparent with them you let them know that hey I'm getting this house under contract for a certain amount. Let's say you and I decide that you're going to sell me a house that you own for $50,000. We sign a contract and you're allowing me the option to then purchase that house and are assigned it to someone else. So I find someone that's like me, that's an investor that maybe wants to flip a house, that maybe wants a rental property, whatever they want to do with it. It doesn't matter to me. 
if I have the house under contract with you for 50,000, I find someone else. And let's say the person that I find, we, we negotiate that I, they're going to buy the house for me for 60,000. 60,000. So that $10,000 difference when the house goes to close, that difference comes to me. The seller gets to sell their house for the price that they want it. And the person that brought the house gets the price that they want it at the $60,000. And it's a win-win for so everyone. Basically, it's a win for everybody. Right. Cause basically it's just business and, it's like a kind of like a middleman type. Deal. Right. And then right. that that goes back to the real estate agent and real estate investor thing. You're actually being an agent at the same time because you're selling a house for someone and you're real estate investing when you're doing wholesale. Right. Because had you not came to them with that proposal, they probably wouldn't have found that buyer. Right. So it's like you get to be all of it in once. Would you think of it that way? Because it, it kind of seems like it. It is kind of. I don't want to use the word because I don't want to say it. Like as a disclaimer, I don't. I don't want. And agents don't really like that. Oh, okay. When okay. wholesalers say that, um, the main difference that I that sticks out to me in regards to being a wholesaler and being an agent up until recently, wholesaling was normally of houses that people could not qualify for traditionally. So what people would deem un- ugly houses. You know, when you buy a house traditionally, you have to go, you go through a bank or you go through a lender. They're going to want a house to be in a certain in a good state. Shape, shape. Right. So they can, uh, cause they don't want to put their money into something that's right. falling apart. So that's where the wholesaling market originated from because a lot of wholesalers would get those houses that agents couldn't pick up. Okay. So that that was more of where it was, but now agents are seeing, you know, the benefits of one working with wholesalers and they're seeing mm-hmm. that there's a lot of money being left on the table. Exactly. So now they're starting to also deal with those houses deemed ugly houses. But that's initially wholesaling kind of runs parallel with being an agent. Yeah, because I noticed that like um a lot of the real estate investors have different relationships. Right. with people because you uh especially an agent starting out he or she may not have certain relationships with people that are like more financially stable. Right. Real, real estate investors, you do a lot of network yes. in and being in a lot of places where people actually yes. have this capital. Yes. So you're able to be around people that can purchase these homes a whole lot faster than right. an agent may be able to find someone, yeah. you know? And what's happening now also too, now that agents are are learning more about, more about the um, investor side wholesalers welcome working with agents. Um, actually the, la- the wholesale deal that I did, I actually got it from an agent. Okay. Um, but the agent was, uh, was busy. And like you said, the agent realized the value in me and the network that I've built. So the agent came and said, Hey, you know, I know this person personally, but the house, you know, needs a little work. I think this is a better fit for you. Um, agent got paid still, still mm-hmm. paid the agent. And once again, it was a win-win for everyone. A lot of, Things not just with real estate it's like you have to swallow your pride sometimes yeah. instead of get if if at the end of the day keep things business instead of personal right. oh you know look at this wholesaler trying to infiltrate this business and think she's no right it's just business let's right. all win together and right. just keep everything cordial and that way we can at the end yeah. of the day everybody trying to do the same thing right but uh people who want to buy houses want to buy houses people who want right. to sell houses want to sell them it's, the, it's just at the end of the day right I always say, what's what's a hundred percent of zero? Zero. You see what I'm saying? So might as well split the pie. Yeah. And see what what can happen. Absolutely. Um, as far as uh the investor, I had another question I was going to ask. Um, so when you go into your whole, because you said that you flipped houses in the mm-hmm. past. Um, during that process, um, what are some of the uh, pros and cons of doing that, and what's some hardships that you face trying to do some things like that? Let's start with the. I guess we'll start with the cons. The cons of flipping houses um, is, unless you're doing the work yourself, you are at the mercy of a contractor. So that can be a pro and a con. Especially, it could be a con if you don't find good people to work with. Another con is um, it's risky. Real estate investing in a whole is risky, but it's also risky in a, a volatile market. You never know how the market is going to shift. Um, profits aren't, there's a con in regards to profits aren't necessarily guaranteed. So you just have to be mindful. It can also, as a con, it could be a lot of work. Um, one of the pros are kind of, they go, they, they, they correlate in regards with the cons. On the flip side of it being a, a con that you can, you know, the, the market is vital at a time when the market is good, you can make huge profits on it. Um, one of the, 
the biggest pros is um, you get to be creative in regards to me. I like that as a pro. I get to be creative. I like seeing things, you know, go from um, one state to another and know that I had a, a hand in making that thing better. Mm-hmm. Also, a huge pro for me is just being able to provide safe, um, up to date, modern housing at an affordable price for people. Yeah, because that that's a big issue too. Because a lot of people, uh, we can move into the home buying situation, uh, especially in the, I guess, the middle to low class community. A lot of people think they can't, they they'll never get a house or they right. they can't afford a house and things like that. Uh, what do you say to people like that? Well. For people like that, I always say there is always something out there in order for you to be able to, to buy a house. Mm-hmm. There are um, the government normally has grants. The city that you, you that you live in normally has grants. All lenders are not created the same. You need to know exactly what it is that you qualify for. People don't know um, in regards to credit score. They don't know a lot of what's on the checklist. Um, also, that there's things outside of that. For instance, being an, as an investor, there's a part of, you know, one of the programs that I offer is owner financing. And with owner financing, it doesn't go in line with traditional financing. So it's much easier to qualify. No banks are involved. Um, you don't necessarily need a high credit score. Um, you, you know, if you have a stable job and you're able to prove, you know, yeah. that you have a, you have a good job and these aren't houses that are necessarily in, in bad places. We understand exactly what you just said. A lot of people think that they can't afford a house or for whatever reason they can't get into a house. And that's just not true. There are several options out there for anyone that thinks they can't get in the home. And I, um, and, and speaking on that topic, I do, uh, want everyone to know that you, anybody can get a house and you, all you have to do is, uh, Work with the right people and right. find the right resources in order to do so. But I also want to go on the other side and say that it's all about timing as well. Because right. a lot of people um, I'm seeing on social media, um, people saying, uh, you're spending this much money a month on a uh, apartment when you right. could be doing this and that on a house. And then there's this, um, there's this thing that people keep saying, uh, like uh, mortgage is $900, $700. That's a lot. I know being a homeowner, right. that's a lot. And secondly, also, uh, people say you're spending all this money on this apart, uh, apartment and you could be buying a house. That kind of makes sense, but then it doesn't because you got to think about it. First of all, your rent's not going to, I mean, your mortgage's not going to be 700 to $900. That's a lie, especially right now. And secondly, because <laughs> I'm passionate about this. And secondly, um, when you have your own house, anything breaks, that's that's on you. So it's different because when I was uh, having my apartment, my apartment was twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a month, which is way cheaper than I'm paying for mortgage. But when things broke, I just called a phone number. Yeah. Like uh, recently, last year, when it had to freeze, one of the pipe busted, right. that was nine hundred dollars. Boom. Right. I had this pipe uh, water leaking out the garage. Right. You see what I'm saying? So you have to think about those things. I'm not I don't want to discourage people from getting homes, but at the same time, uh, try not to uh, be pressured into doing something because right. somebody's saying that you're uh, making a stupid choice by paying rent. You need to, it's timing, you need to save and things like that and think about that. Sometimes rent is a better option. I'm glad you said that because no, people some, won't say that. No, People some, won't say it. Sometimes it is. If if you are, um, let's say for instance, you're, you're a college student and you're here in Lamar mm-hmm. and you're going to work a job, let's say for two years. Some people may say that you still can buy a house and then, you know, if, if you're only going to be, you know, in a city for a short amount of time and still sell it. But being in the, as a real estate investor, I've seen this happen, you know, times before where people have been um, sent to, to work somewhere else and they had to, you know, in a, in a moment's time have to sell their house. Um, and then they have to take a loss in the house because they have to to move suddenly. Sometimes it's okay to just for if you know you're going to be be somewhere for two years to just live in an apartment. It really is situational. It really is. So if you're 19, 20 years old and you haven't built your credit and you think that, you know, once I get out of high school, I have to buy a house. And because you have no credit established, yeah, they will give you a house. But, you know, is that going to be at the best rate? Yeah. Is it going to be, you know, what you really need? And sometimes people don't even know where they want to live for the next 
10 years, that is 20 true. years. You know what I'm saying? So you true. you might not want to be here. You might get another job uh, opportunity, especially if you're like between jobs or between careers and you're still trying to find out where you're going to be. You might not be here next right. year. You know, you might move. Owning a house is a lot of responsibility. A Taxes, lot. insurance, insurances are growing up. Mm-hmm. It, it is a lot. It is a lot of responsibility. You mentioned your business at the beginning of the podcast. And, uh, what was the name of that again? American Investment Group. Um, So... How did you get started with coming up with your own business, business name and things like that? So um, because I know you were because I'm pretty sure you were investing or doing real estate as a uh, for a while, just personally just doing it. And then what made you want to say, you know what, I want to make this as a a entity, a a business. Okay, so it started um, when I, I, I was living in Houston and working and networking going to a lot of events that they were having in Houston, you know, trying to be in the place and around the environment that I know that I wanted to be in, you know, and a lot of people ask even now, we'll go back to earlier when I mentioned that I wanted to get into to also teaching real estate and, and putting information out there for people to know the ones that want to also be an investor, how to get started. People ask a lot of times, you see a lot of these gurus say, well, you know, study and then get you a mentor or, you know, so that's that's where I was. I knew that I wanted to get in real estate, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So I kept hearing that people would say to get started to be a wholesaler. Wholesaler will get you money. You know, you'll build a reserve and then you can start, you know, flipping or whatever else you wanted to do. So that was my ultimate thing. They also say, you know, you don't need any credit. You don't need any money. So I was like, that's where I am. I don't have any credit. I don't have any money. So this is where I'm starting. So so you use the wholesaling uh gig uh to basically build capital to build capital okay. right when i got um my first wholesale deal i that's how i actually met my mentor and this is key i need people to really hone in on this because you know that's what gurus tell you and people always ask well will you be my mentor or mm-hmm. will you mentor me how do i find one this is how and why i found my mentor i found her because she was already investing and in building her business i went to her with a wholesale deal with going to her with this deal, she saw my value. She said, hey, this is not somebody in a Starbucks line. And you see what I'm yeah. saying? That that thing right there, finding a mentor is very, very important. And people go and it's, it's okay. You can ask people to be your mentor. But uh, when you get a true mentor, you never ask. Yeah. It's like you said, putting yourself into place, right. working. And as you as you're doing that, you meet people that find a liking to you yeah. and see their value and see that you're hardworking and be like, you know what? I see a lot of potential in this right. person. Let me pour yeah. into this person. Yeah. Like my uh, my mentor, I had uh, two mentors that I just found just by basically doing what we do, hustling right. and working right. and and being in the field. Brooklyn right. Williams, she's uh, she's a big mentor of mine, and she taught me so much from right. from everything, from how to dress, how to. Uh, present myself to people because i didn't know how to do any of this stuff how to talk to people because because before then i was just like man why (laughs) why are we always in my in my brain why are we always acting right you know what i'm saying and it's not acting it's just holding yourself accountable and and being presentable and and she taught me all those things so i get what you're saying about the the mentor that's very important as far as uh finding a mentor and networking yes yes and with bringing her that first deal i remember um that was where the mentorship started. I brought her that deal and was literally like, Hey, I got this deal on the contract, but I really don't know, you know what to Mm -hmm. do with it. And she was like, okay. Um, that's where it started. I started to shadow her from there. I would come to her house and, and that's where you also have to be diligent. I remember driving to her house. We would go and sit at the dining room table in her dining room, uh, four days out of a week. She lived, uh, way across Houston, like literally 35 minutes away from me. She didn't live. So I would, I would get up, um, and drive to her house. Um, See, we- it's, it's things like that, the, the, the small but big things right. that people refuse to do, right. but they say they want to be successful. Right. It's like it's like doing things that you, you're not going to get paid for. You lose money driving over there. Yeah. But if you want it, you want it. Yeah. And that's the things that you have to do in order to gain success. That's what I tell people. I'll be like, people don't win by chance. They win because they do the small things that you won't do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like most people be like, nah, I'm gonna just do a Zoom call. No, sometimes you gotta feel that. You, you gotta, gotta feel do. that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I wanna feel this energy. Yeah. Why are you successful and I'm not? I wanna feel this. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I can get in that mode. Yeah. Like, give me some of what yeah. you got. You know? And that that's what you lean on 
when you're in those moments of you're unsure, you know, while I was following her and going to speaking engagements with her, you see what I'm saying? And we were, she was bringing me along, and we were networking, and she was renting out these these um, rooms at these hotels, and she was giving free workshops. And I'm like, you know, why is she spending her money to do this? You know, these people aren't even paying, and she's giving back and she's educating these people. Now she's built this amazing business. But there was a time where I was you know, in my business. And I was like, God, I need your guidance. I don't know what to do. He brought that back to my remembrance. He was like, remember when you were helping your mentor? He said, don't reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. So I went back, literally, I heard him say, go back to the basics. And I remember those times going around Houston with her, um, helping her prepare, you know, being there when people would sign in, you know, working the, the clipboard and, you know, wondering why is she getting all this? Now she has, you know, I'm talking about probably thousands of people on her mailing list. She has her own, you know, VA. She has this amazing, thriving, multi-million dollar investment. You see what business. I'm saying? That that's that's the thing. It's doing the little things. And by you being along with her, not only are you getting to learn from her, you right. get into uh, meet the people she's around, right. uh, gain some of those relationships right. because relationships are worth way more than money. Yes. You know what yes. I'm saying? So it's like it's like just by being in the presence of her, you, you're just gaining. So much more than you can even count or fathom. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and never asking that, but just, just going along with her and, you know, seeing where, where I could help. And now that I'm growing my own business, all that comes back in relation to what I was doing now. Just literally don't reinvent the, the wheel. Just do what you were doing, you know, when you were serving someone else. And when you say things like seeing where I can help, it makes me think about how a lot of people, when they feel like they can't do what they want, they, they do nothing. Yeah. So uh, that when you when you can't do what you want, just do what you can. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. people people will be like, man, like like with the podcast, before I had cameras, I started off, I had my phone. You know what I'm saying? So things <laughs> right. like that. And I was like, man, I'm looking at everybody else's podcasts and videos and stuff like that. I'm just like, you know what? My stuff look bad. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying and, and you could be like you know what I'm not gonna even film nothing until I can afford this and that yeah. but the, the right thing to do would have been to you know use what you got until you get what you want yeah. because a lot of people they want to level up and move to their next level in life mm -hmm. but they haven't even mastered what they have right like you have this piece of equipment and and in real estate you that would be equivalent to like some, money. Yeah, People money. Think they always have you know what I'm saying? Money, right. And you haven't even learned how to master this small amount yeah. of money. So yeah. when you do get that, what are you gonna do? Yeah. And and you're not even ready for it. That. You haven't even used this to its full ability. Right. And you want you ready for the next big thing. So sometimes you have to use what you got and master it and then move on. And just start. That's another thing that I was hung up on. When I said earlier, I studied real estate for 15 years plus at this point, but I'd already studied it for like 10 years before I ever did anything. I was afraid to start because I didn't want to quote unquote fail. I felt like I, I needed to know everything. I wanted to jump out looking like a guru. Mm -hmm. And I remember my mentor told me, you're the type that when you jump out of an airplane, you want to have all the plans and you want to know how it's going to be built. And she said, unlike you, I'm the one that'll build the airplane on the way down. And that mm. changed my mentality. I was like, I mm. don't have to know all the steps. I got to jump out of this airplane at some point. Mm. And when you jump out, yeah, there's going to be some stuff that you don't know. But if you stay diligent and you keep being consistent, you're going to either run across somebody that's going to help you. They're going to know the next step. Or by fumbling, you're going to figure it out yourself. And the thing about it is you basically what you do is every time you do something, even if you're not perfect, because a lot of people are like right. that. They want to be perfect immediately they want everybody to get yeah. all the uh, give them the attention right. they want all the money yeah. they want this and that <laughs> but what i learned is all you do is just keep going and every right. time you do something do one thing better than you did the last time right that's all you do keep adding building bricks brick by brick yeah. just do one thing better and then before you know it you're like man i look good yeah you know yeah james clear mentions that in the book called atomic habits he said all you have to in, all you have to do is increase one thing by one percent just one percent. One thing. Just one percent. That's Every not a time. lot. Yeah. And then like it, it all started, especially with the podcast, with me trying to do more and more of them. I was like, you know what? I'm I am saying <laughs> um a lot. Let me cut the ums. And I said, you know what? I went from a hundred ums to ninety nine. Right. And yeah. then you know yeah. you said you keep you right. just keep keep on keep on trying to to better a craft and before you know yes. it. And that's how everybody who's 
at the top of their craft did right. it, but you you didn't see it. You're you're catching people right. when they're at the top of their game. Yeah. So it's like to you, it's like, man, I'm nothing. But all those battle scars lead yes. to you excelling. Right. You know, there there's a lot of things that we move on and what we hear in society and society, and that's what we go off of, what we see and what we hear. You mm-hmm. know, they say practice makes perfect, but that's not true. Nothing can be perfect. Mm-hmm. Practice makes you better. Exactly. And even in better, there's always room for improvement. You never be you, the best. You can you and you never want to be because you always want to be learning and you always want to be growing. Growing is, is evolving. That's forever. That reminds me of a um interview that I watched of uh Denzel Washington and he would be considered one of the top actors in, in you know, in the world and it's like who can right. teach you? But he says that he still takes acting classes. So it's just yeah. like if he's still taking acting yes. classes and we think that he's the best actor ever. It's like, what makes you think that in your craft, you need to stop learning? Absolutely. So if it's a young person, a kid, um, teenager, or, or or even adult that wants to get into what you're doing or uh, be successful, uh, what would you tell them and what are some steps that you would uh, have them take? Okay, so everybody's journey into real estate, if you ask someone, it, it all is, it can start anyway. And it can all be different. So what I'm going to say now isn't the only way. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I will say is we have this saying in real estate amongst each other when people say, when's a good time to buy a house? And we'll say yesterday. So I will say, when's a good time to start? Yesterday. Yesterday. That's what you need to do. You need to start. If this is what you want to do because the field is broad and I can't tell you exactly how to start because I don't know what you want to get out of it. But you need to start. You need to start educating yourself. More than any time that I have been uh, been alive, education is prevalent. It's free. It's there. So start and start by educating yourself. Do you feel like a person can, because uh, uh, not only do we educate ourselves when we get into new things, we also watch people who, who are doing those things. That. Do you think a person can do too much of that, watching somebody and they're just watching and watching for a year or so, watching somebody be great, watching somebody sell houses, watching somebody flip? wholesale and then they never act they can and i have first-hand knowledge with that because those years that i was sitting that i was quote unquote studying real estate i was in analysis paralysis Mm -hmm. i was just paralyzed i was learning so much i had all this information but i wasn't acting so not just start i should say that not just start but actively be active the stuff that you're learning try start implementing that you know, if you if you learn about something and you read about it, then you see someone that's doing it. Try to find someone locally that's doing it. If you can't find anyone locally that's doing it and you're following someone, be the person. Start doing it. Mm-hmm. I remember um, having a conversation with my mentor and I was telling her in regards to networking that I I felt like I was going to start going back and forth to Houston because I was missing the, missing the networking, the, the networking connections here. Um, in Beaumont. And I remember her telling me, Taya, if it's not there, then what's stopping you from being the one to build it? So exactly. even when you start and you don't find anyone or no one's willing to help you, that doesn't mean that you stop. You be the one that can change that. Start. Do it. Somebody has to do it. Why right. not be you? That part. I'm going to give you a little um, scenario. Okay. So um, I want to be an investor, real estate, whatever. And um, let's just say... Um, I got twelve thousand dollars in the bank. I got twelve thousand dollars in the bank. Um, I don't know where to start, but I don't want to spend the whole twelve. Okay. I want to have a little cushion to fall back on, but I do want to see and test the waters and see if I can just get my break and get in. What would you do? First thing I would ask you is, even with that twelve thousand dollars, what do you want to do? And then you say, well, I don't know what I don't know. But that's where it goes back to educating. Real estate investing and real estate itself is so broad. Yeah, you can get out here with $12,000 and you can make a million. I'm not saying that you can't. Okay, so what what would you do, though? Now? What, uh, knowing what give, I know give now. Me, yeah, knowing what you know now, what would you do? All you have is 12000 and you know you need to keep three of that in your pocket. You got to keep three of that in your pocket. <laughs> what would you do? So... 
Well, we got nine thousand dollars. Got nine thousand. I'm finding me a house for five grand. <laughs> find it, okay, but that's the thing though. When you find that house for five grand, that's gonna be a rinky dink house. It's not gonna be a rinky. You don't think house. so? No, because there's. I know it's not gonna be a rinky dink house. I, I I spoke about this on other podcasts on how I got my first house for free. Mm, okay, okay. So when you study and you educate yourself, well, give me that since you gave the other podcast. How oh, did you? Get, okay. just, you don't have to give me the super duper. Just speed it up. Fume, okay, fast forward. Found a house. And um, it was from someone else. It was an older couple, and they used to have rental properties. Okay. But they'd gotten up in age, and they were liquidating all of their houses. And when I say liquidating, they were having to. This particular rental that they had was going into foreclosure. Mm-hmm. And because I'm a foreclosure, I ex- I I educated myself in, in, in various areas. I consider myself a foreclosure expert. I was able to come in and speak with them um, in regarding to stopping the foreclosure. This was such a burden on such a burden on them that literally the owner told me, "Hey, this is making my wife sick. We literally just want to be done with this. We don't have we don't want anything to do with this. I'm having to pay, you know, for my my wife's medical bills and this is draining us. We can't manage this property anymore." And I provided a solution for them. I said, "Okay, don't worry about it. You won't have to worry about it going forward. I'll take care of it." And that's what I did. I did what I do what I knew how to do in regards to stopping the the, the foreclosure and they literally signed the house you know I, I bought the house for free wow so if you um let's just say because you you spoke earlier about the whole wholesaling thing and how uh somebody wants to sell a house and they want 50 you sell it for 60 you get the 10 right. um can you give me a little bit um how do you go by finding somebody to buy that house somebody to if, buy the house yeah like somebody to because you have the contract and you're trying to sell it for 60 right Right. Um, is it just uh, promotion? That's it? Like visual promotion? Or are you networking, going? Like how how do you go up to someone and say, hey, I have this house for 60? Are you just putting it on the market? There's there's many of things you can do. You can. I suggest you do market it. Uh, if you're getting into this business and wholesaling is what you want to do, then even before you have a house, you should be networking yourself. Okay. yourself. When people... Think about a house or someone having a, a good deal and you wanting to go into real estate in the, the field of wholesaling, then they should think of you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So therefore, you should be already looking for someone to buy your house before you even get it. Got you. So like you said, um, would this be a smart deal? Uh, ideal? Um, idea? Uh, say you, somebody's trying to, like, again, uh, sell a house for 50. You right. want to sell it for 60. Well, actually, you want to make 10K. Okay. Would it be smart to try to sell it for 65 and possibly use five for marketing? Like, kind of like just for promotions? Or is that not smart? I can't say. Um, it depends on the house. And the reason I can't say is because in when you're wholesaling, you're normally trying to sell it to someone that's going to make some money on it nine times out of ten. Oh, it's not you, somebody that's actually trying to dwell in it. Live right. In it. And you okay. can. Okay. You can. That's true. But when you're trying to wholesale, that's the whole meaning of wholesale. Yeah. They're going to get it at a good at price. At a good price. Okay. So you have that to leave what we call in the business some meat on the bone. Got you. Yeah. And that's another thing in regards to wholesaling. You know, when I just double back on what I just said previously, you're supposed to be networking yourself. And then you once you get a house, you find someone that's going to buy the house. You should already have that available. So you're basically selling a house before you buy a house. Right. But a good deal sells itself. So to get in this business and wholesale, and let's say that same house that you bought for 50, let's say you want to sell it for 80 because you're, you're trying to make 30 grand when essentially you know that 10,000 will also get you a good living. You know, that that's not, that's not that's, just that's money, not, yeah. right? That's not just money. Just People don't it. even make that what in a month exactly and you could sell it, you know, a, a good deal. It's gone in two weeks. I've sold a house in two weeks mm-hmm. and then you're on to the next. It's 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 quantity over I've quality. And you're not sitting there holding the, your house. Yeah, I've actually had friends in the past that that got a deal like that wholesaling right. thing and sold a house in less than that. Like, right, fast just because of who they, who they know. Because you could be knowing somebody and you could come across a property or something, and be like, I know exactly who would right. get, who wants this right. or needs this right, right. now. Right, because they might have right because they have all the the resources, the contractors that that has lower prices. Right, because you you probably try to do something that someone one's trying to do, but you don't have the relationships. Right, so the contracts is charging you this and yes. this to build this, fix yes. the roof for this amount. Yes, but um, but that person he has the deals. Right, so it right. makes more sense. 
Right. To go that way. And that's how you also become the go-to person. Hey, I know that Rakim's going to bring me an awesome deal. He's going to make money. I already understand that. And then we're going to make money. He's not going to bring me a house that's all the way up here that mm-hmm. I can't make any money in, you know, and, yeah. I, and I'm afraid to buy a house from him. That keeps you, that makes me a repeat customer. Exactly. In regards to that. Because uh, people, those people who are uh, making money off the houses or renting them out, selling them or whatever right. they're doing, they're going to be repeat. Uh, repeat customers if you're making them money yes you see what i'm saying because a lot of times we all do it we like to stick with what works right so if you're working right you're working right um let's go into as we close uh i want to go into uh things that you got coming up in the future like uh what what is what are your plans and goals is it uh just, just let me know what's next right okay um with real estate I, I noticed that like even with doing this more of a coming into this business, I want to change the dynamic in regards to we've already touched on, you know, like gatekeeping and being an educator and letting people into this business, mm-hmm. not just educating people that want to get into business, but people that want to buy a house. I don't want to just sell someone a house and them not know, you know, what I'm doing in regards to them getting a good deal, what they exactly. can do with it down in the future. I want to educate everyone. So I also have in 2024 me and, um, a colleague of mine, Cicely, Cicely Sterling Moore, we're going to start offering workshops. And these workshops are going to be geared to more on the side of homeowners, what it takes to buy a house, what type of credit you need, what type of insurance to put on a house when you purchase a house, any and everything. You know, the questions that people have when they sit down with a lender, especially for a first time and they don't know what to expect. This is, people always talk about how this is one of the, the biggest purchases of your life. And they, they say that with a straight face and they don't like that. That holds a lot of weight. If this is the biggest purchase of your life, you need to know a mu- as much about it as possible. Exactly. So we want to educate people on that later. Um, also, I'll be getting into a lot of what we touched on on here. People that want to provide a certain living for themselves and get out of the rat race that want to become their own their own boss. or they want to work with someone in real estate. I'm going to um, start probably later on in 2024 providing workshops and classes for investors I also at the beginning of 2024 I'm going to be releasing a course because I get questions all the time how to get started in real estate how did you get started in real estate and it's as I've said before it's so broad that there's there's a starting point that I want people to have and then we can build off of that you're on you are subconsciously going through the steps of um of scaling something in a way because you, you, you like you said, you start with research, right. you're reading it. And I'm pretty sure right. at one point you wrote your plans down. Yes. And then the next you put it into action. Right. And now you're headed to the teaching it portion. Yes. And that yes. that's like full circle. Not only are you uh, bringing it all around, but you're also scaling it because that's yes. another avenue yes. in which you can uh, um, not only help people, but increase income as well. Right. And put, other people in position to build their income. Right, right. That's that's also why at the end of the month, December on December the 30th, we're going to hold a, I won't consider it a workshop or actually calling it a, a, a party for women because there's a lot of women in this business. Um, this is a male dominated field, but there are a lot of women. And if you're watching this after, <laughs> if you're watching this after uh, the, um, what do, what do you call it? It's, the vision board. If you if you're watching this after the vision board event, I want you to still follow her because I'm gonna put yes. her uh, links in the description, and I'm also gonna put her uh, you know her name and everything at the lower third. So you you've been seeing that pop up throughout the uh, video as well. Um, because I'm pretty sure that's not the only event since it's so soon. Because today is the what 15? Today is today so is the 15. So it's in two weeks uh, of that event, but. After you watch this, go right. follow because you never know right. what's next. Yes, absolutely. Because that's what we want to do. We want to encourage the public um, to become owners. Mm-hmm. We want to, and, and not just of homes, of businesses. Um, and we want people to just, just, just have more knowledge. Um, th- this is the American, they call home ownership and, and business is in owning your, your own business, the mm-hmm. American dream. But if you don't go in into correctly, it could be the American nightmare. And the thing I want to uh, note also is that a lot of people, um, don't want to buy or, um, or, don't, or think it's like not cool to sell knowledge. But at the end of the day, if you're serious about something, right. uh, it, 
just a small token of appreciation for getting certain knowledge shouldn't be a problem because right. the thing it thing about it is it it kind of filters the people who are not serious. Right. You have to make an investment in yourself. You have to because you want to filter out yeah. those people who just, because if you just have something, just throw it up there for, because even when me, I used to do uh, videos, I used to do commercials and things like that. And when I first started, I was doing videos for 40 and $150 and things like that. And I was getting so many that I was like right. overwhelmed, always right. booked, uh, giving people their projects right. late and things like that. And then somebody told me that was like, um, do you provide a, a premium? Do you provide a premium quality um, experience or a product? I said, yeah, I like to think that right. I worked hard and provided that. Well, you need to make it premiumly priced, right? So that you can filter out those bad clients right. or people who aren't serious or uh, or people who a day later they're uh, they're texting you like, where's this and that right. and like that. And I said, you know what? You're right. So I went up. On right. the price and things like that. And then you start filtering and getting right. good people, right. quality clients, quality um, networking and things like that. So certain things in life uh, are worth the price. Right. For um, my men my mentor, I, I spoke about her earlier and how she's built her business. And what was her name again? Her name is Ashley Jackson. Ashley Jackson. I might I might have to speak with her one day. Yes, and she's uh she's in Houston and she offers several courses uh for thousands of dollars. Now this is a woman that I told you I used to go to her house for free and we would sit at her dining room table, but. Last year I took her, I paid for it in full. Did not ask for a credit. Oh, you're my mentor. And took her took her course because one I value mm -hmm. her as a person. And did it add value to you? It did. Well? You see what I'm saying? It did. I, I got in there and and there was a there was although I'm operating my business there was a portion on the marketing that I needed. It, it was worth those thousands of dollars that I paid. Just that part, the part on marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have said, oh well, you know, I used to work with her. I know everything that she knows, or she can't teach me anything at this point. But I pay for that you never course. Never know. Yeah. And the thing about it is, a lot of people. Uh, are saying, oh, I'm not paying that much for this or that. But at the end of the day, you're not like if somebody comes comes to your event and films your ev event right. or whatever, you're not paying them to film your event technically. You're paying them for the years of knowledge and education that they had to do to get to where they are for you to be calling them. That you know is what true. I'm saying? So like, it's like you're paying, this took something that you're paying somebody to do, it took them time to hone that skill. That is true. So, they should be compensated for not only the time, the money that they spend for the right. equipment that they're using yes. and things like that. So it's like we dumb it down to I'm not paying that much right. for a video. Right. You're not buying a video. You're buying right. a person who's put in the work and made themselves good enough for you to see. I want a video like right. that. You wanted to, you wanted something yes. like that for yes. a reason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And people yeah. spend time and money to get right. the knowledge that they have. For a short time, I had that mindset in regards to courses and, you know, what and, and I kind of thought about that. And then now looking back in real estate, especially, mm -hmm. and I can only talk from the field, this field and this aspect, because this is the business that I'm in. One deal, one deal could pay for that course like a hundred times, a mm -hmm. hundred times. Yep. So imagine me telling you, hey, give me a hundred, give, give me a dollar and I'll give you 10,000 back. You wouldn't take that deal? A hundred times. A hundred times. You take it. And that's what a lot of these courses are. Depending on, you know, who you take it from or, or what what you get out of it. But just think about the amount of work that you put in, um, that just you put in right. and you never was getting paid. The work, right. research, right. Uh, learning, uh, right. even the work that you said you were doing with your mentor, right. just there, just to be a yeah. tag along. Yeah. You, you... Sometimes you get paid for that work on the back end. Right. So that's what that's what you're paying for when you're paying for courses and and, and, and learning tools and things like right. that. That person is being finally right. being compensated yes. for the work that they put in and no one was paying them a dime. Yes. Yes. So that, that that's true. just basically what it is. But we've been here for quite some time. Right. <laughs> and I thank you for coming. I I, I think I think do an hour and a half, like I said. Well, probably a little longer. It's okay. Well, because we got some good content and we got the gems and jewels that I yes. need for the for the viewers. Uh, do you have any closing words? Any closing words? Or probably be what I said earlier in regards to wholesaling, but just in anything. Let, let's just let's just say in general to anything. Just being successful. Anything, in anything that you want to do. Yesterday was the day to start. Don't sit on your hands. Get started now. 
Hey, and you just heard that from Taya. The what you call? AKA Miss AIG. As for American Investment Group, that's real estate chick. Cause I keep it real. She keeps it real all the time. And you know we keep it real at the Be For Real podcast. We always keep it real. And I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. We're also on all podcast platforms, whether awesome. that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we will be there. Also, follow us on Be For Real Podcast on the, I mean, Be For Real Media on Instagram and other socials. Everything will be in the description. And I want to thank you once again. And remember, be for real.